This video on the Unknowledgeables. We're going to be reacting to the reviews and the movie Dear Evan Hansen. Oh, I should have watched it. <laughs> So this is kind of new for us. We've not done anything like this before. Where yeah, I'm sure, like yeah, a bit of a worry that our audience who've stuck with us through all of our videos so far, yeah, maybe it's a bit of a turn off that we're going to be flipping to something so different now. But yeah, yeah. you got to push out the boundaries and grow. If you're going to grow your audience as a channel, which we do want to do, mm -hmm. and if you're going to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. develop as we are like as a, a channel. Um, and this will be really interesting because we didn't, we got a bit of slack for our, uh, a reaction of Dear Reverend Hansen trailer. Um, mm. and also I feel like we're going to be navigating kind of iffy subjects for this. So that'll be fun as well. So I look forward to it. So Dear Evan Hansen, the movie, do you want to, as you've never seen the movie, but you saw the trailer, do you want to just quickly outline the plot? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see if I remember the trailer. I think it was uh, there's a kid and another kid, and that kid befriends that other kid, and then that second kid commits suicide. And oh, I was like, his therapist told him to always write really nice letters to himself or mm. something like that. And then when that kid committed suicide, um, the mother found the letters and was like, Oh, these are from that other kid who befriended him just before he committed suicide. Oh, like, look at all these lovely things he was writing to my son. And so that kid, the one who's still alive, the protagonist, is like, uh, yep, yeah. yep, yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I was, me and your son were having this really lovely, kind correspondence, even though that's not true. And then through that, I don't know, maybe he has to do it for other people or like learn how to change other people's lives for the <laughs> he just, better. He just becomes best friends of all the people who commit suicide from then on in. But um, you're yeah. kind of, you're almost right. You're almost right. Mm. Dear Evan Hansen. So Evan Hansen is crippled by social anxiety and his therapist tells him to write himself letters. So he writes to himself, Dear Evan Hansen, mm. today's going to be a good day, blah, 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 blah. He meets this other guy at school who's kind of a bully and the other guy takes one of his letters. Oh, right. And then the other so guy... So then it appears that he yeah, wrote it. Yeah, mm. so then the other guy commits suicide and the only letter, the only note he had on him was said, Dear Evan Hansen. So it looked like his suicide note was to Evan Hansen, basically. Mm. So Evan Hansen is like sort of thrust into the situation. He goes along with the lie because he's crippled with social anxiety and he, he doesn't really know what to say but he says okay because the mother's crying to him and stuff and and then he's lying more and more and more and yeah basically without any spoilers that's sort of the the beginning conceits of the film and that's how it goes mm -hmm. on and on and on and uh yeah it's been getting pretty bad reviews pretty awful mm. reviews is it getting bad reviews because it's a bad adaptation of the stage show. Like, did the stage show get bad reviews? No, the stage show won a bunch of Tony Awards. Now, some of the things in the bad reviews I agree with. But there of is, the oh, movie. Do, oh, of the movie, yeah. And uh, just mm -hmm. to be clear to the audience, I've seen the movie. Uh, Kit hasn't, as he promised. Um, <laughs> uh, but... So some of the things I agree with in the bad reviews, but there is one massive thing which I've got a huge problem when reviewers do this. It really irks me, and I don't know why, so I thought maybe I could discuss it with you. But first, let's go to the things that I agree with. Ben Platt looks like a 30-year-old man. Uh, yeah, I think maybe we mentioned yeah. that in our he, review of the trailer. He really looks bad. And there's that kind of uncanny valley thing. So this is like the thing I agree with Was in a lot of the reviews. The performer in the stage show exactly he yes yeah, he works in the stage show because he's 30 40 100 feet away from you <laughs> yeah and also it was like i don't know six years ago or something he's 28 now but he actually looks about 30 but yeah in the movie they've given him some kind of weird hairdo which doesn't quite yeah, sit quite right big. on his head and they've mm. make up the hell out of him to the point where it's like you can see foundation on his skin. You can see like under the foundation there's like there would be stubble there. Like there's there's so much about his face that looks wrong that it's just really hard to get over that. 
Like, it is hard to get over that. And, like, I, it would be a bit more acceptable if if the rest of the people who were cast in the movie didn't look so young, but he really looks like a 30 year old man surrounded by 19 year olds doing this lie to them all. So that's one really troubling thing, which I do agree Changes with. Changes the film a bit. Yeah. If the film <laughs> feels like it's now about a 30 year old man who's inserted himself into a high school. <laughs> exactly. But, um, but apart from that, I, I have an issue with a lot of the reviews. So let's go through some of the reviews. I'm going to send you some links right now, Kit, and I'm going to let you Mm -hmm. read some of them out loud. The problem with Dear Evan Hansen is systemic, and the film operates on faulty ground. Connor's grieving parents, Cynthia and Larry, meet with Evan under the belief that he was Connor's one close friend. Evan doesn't put up much of a fight, which is blamed on his anxiety. But he deepens the subterfuge by enlisting his friend Jared to create fake email exchanges supposedly written by Evan and Connor. The correspondence paints a picture of the pair visiting Connor's favourite orchard, Evan falling from a tree, Connor nursing him back to health. Cynthia and Larry completely buy the distasteful Con. In his duping, Evan is revealed as a devious protagonist, and the film follows suit. Harsh words. Harsh words. To give this film quite a uh, a negative review, Roger Ebert, you know, that's that's one of the main reasons. The... Right, so Roger Ebert's issue here is that the protagonist... It doesn't feel like, oh, he's kind of forced into this situation. It kind of, it just seems like, yeah, this protagonist is just deliberately deceiving people. I, I don't buy it. I don't buy that, like, oh, he's kind of been forced into this situation. Oh, how awkward. It's just mm. like, yeah, he's being a jerk. Exactly. Exactly. Now, the next review is the New York Times. Treacly and manipulative, Dear Revan Hansen turns villain into victim. And it turns grief into an exploitable vulnerability. It made me cringe. Again, talking about the choices of the character. Mm. And then just the last thing is Rotten Tomato. It has some good reviews, but it is majority, like, major- the majority is... Wait, how do you say that word? Majoritively? Majoritally? Major- the majority... Marjorie? Bad. Yeah, Marjorie. It's 33% on Rotten Tomatoes, so a lot Mm. of people don't like it. I'll read some of this as well. Uh, Okay, uh, rating PG-13, genre musical drama, original language (laughs) English. This doesn't seem that harsh. Okay, from The Observer. Production company, Universal Pictures. Ooh. (laughs) Yeah, that, okay, that is a bit harsh. Okay, Rex Reed from The Observer says, Let's face it, Evan Hansen is actually a hateful, self-serving character who becomes a phony symbol of peace, tolerance, and compassion by using others for his own gain. And then uh, from Film Week, Amy Nicholson writes, Once you turn on this character, the whole movie becomes unbearable and repellent. Do you, if you were to make a guess, what is my issue with these reviews? What would your guess be? Because I don't know if... No one's really mentioned my issue that I've seen on any YouTube videos or anything, but I've got a real issue with these reviews. And can you potentially guess what my issue might be? Well, everything you've shown me in these reviews is about how they feel like the protagonist is being a jerk. He's a villain, not a victim. And the film is trying to make you sympathise with him. Mm. Perhaps your issue is that you think, yeah, he is being a jerk. But the film isn't trying to make you sympathise with him. The film doesn't fail just because you didn't sympathise with him. You're supposed to think he's a villain. I don't think that's what you think. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but it is close. They're critiquing... That's what a villain would say. (laughs) They seem to be critiquing critiquing the choices that the characters are making Mm -hmm. um which you know fair enough i if you don't agree with the choices a character makes oh of course and if it's the main protagonist of the film yeah fine that can be annoying to watch but it doesn't make it a bad film you not agreeing what the what the character does So then the other issue is, is the film trying to make us sympathise with the character or be on the character's side? To that, I would say, that's a really frustrating thing for me when people do this. And they did it, they've done it time and time again with so many movies that I love. Now, I'm not saying I love Dear Evan Hansen. It It does have its issues, but 
Pulp Fiction. We are meant to kind of be following and rooting for John Travolta and Samuel Jackson in that movie. And they're despicable characters. They shoot Marvin in the face. Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. And then they shoot a bunch of teenagers. They make horrible decision after horrible decision. And we're kind of meant to... We're not meant to root for their decisions. We're just meant to think these these people are really cool, right? Um... I feel like if you're making a review on a movie and you think the movie's bad, it needs to go a bit deeper. I mean, all these reviews we've just read, they do go a little bit deeper. They mention the Ben Platt thing, that's right. But the the chunk of all the reviews are always talking about the choices that the characters are making and how they're really despicable. It's not like they're really unrealistic. They're not saying, well, these choices are so unrealistic, I couldn't believe it. They're all saying, I just don't like the choices that the character makes. And that's really annoying for me because I don't like the choices that... Um, uh, Samuel Jackson and John Travolta's characters make in Pulp Fiction, but that movie is like top 20 movie of all time. Like, it can't be the reason a movie's bad, right? Or am I, I mistaken? Am I mistaken? Okay, because I, I feel like I might be mistaken because every review disagrees with me. But yeah, what, what would I be mistaken on there? What's the issue that I'm missing? Well, I think there are some films that... Sorry, you haven't seen Dear Evan Hansen. All right, I get it. I haven't seen Evan Hansen. But from the sound of it, it's not aiming to be the same kind of film as Pulp Fiction. It's yeah. not aiming to be a film where the protagonist is a badass who does kind of bad things. He murders people, but, oh, we still kind of root for him. But then, oh, but Bruce Willis's character, I'm kind of rooting for him. But, oh, then he gets shot by John Travolta. Oh, no, John Travolta gets shot by Bruce Willis. Like, oh, but they're both kind of bad guys, but they're really cool. It sounds like that's not what Dear Evan Hansen is trying to be. It sounds like Dear Evan Hansen is trying to be a saccharine, feel-good, oh, Evan Hansen, he brings love and joy to everyone's lives. So it sounds like that film does hinge more upon you needing to feel like, hey, this is a good guy and he's good-hearted and he's doing good things. Mm. In a way that Breaking Bad or The Sopranos doesn't... That's not what it's trying to do. It's not trying to be a feel-good, oh, this protagonist, oh, he's so sweet, and oh, I feel so bad for him, oh, no. Right, okay, all right, then. So here's one other element. So I anticipated mm -hmm. you were going to say that, and here's one other element that is in Dear Evan Hansen, which maybe makes it more um, harshly looked upon than something like mm -hmm. Pulp Fiction, for Evan example. Evan Hansen, which I have not seen. Yeah, you've not seen. But Ev Dear Ev Evan Hansen has... A, uh, a mental disorder. He's got crippling social anxiety. And I guess a lot of people are saying it's so annoying to have the lead having a mental illness and making these fucking horrible decisions. Um, that's really annoying and it, it really pushes back. And I, I, I like to say in response to that is I feel like that was the exact same kind of critique that Joker got. And again, I find it annoying critique because... I feel like it's not critiquing the film in itself. It's critiquing a choice that a character is making that you just don't like. Why did the character make that choice? So in, are you talking about the, Evan Hansen or Joker? I don't want to give too many spoilers with Evan Hansen, but... But the character made that choice because the writer wrote that. Right. So that is part of the film. So critiquing the actions of the characters is critiquing the films. I get what you mean if a character in a film eats cornflakes and someone says... I like Cocoa Pops, so it really bothers me that that character chose to eat cornflakes. What an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I agree that that is not critiquing the film. They're critiquing the actions of the character as if that character were a, re a real person. Or someone who says, oh, I don't like The Sopranos because Tony Soprano, he like strangled that guy. That was really mean. What a bad guy. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> that's the point of The Sopranos. That's... That is what it's trying to do. It's, it's called an anti-hero. I get. Okay. I get, yeah, I, I, I think that is a bad criticism of that. But for someone to say it, you know, the kind of film that Dear Evan Hansen that I haven't seen seems to be trying to be, this character is being a jerk, and it doesn't work in that film. 
So I or maybe it's I'm supposed to feel on board with what this character is doing, but I feel I just don't identify with him enough. I feel like he's made a, a stupid decision just because the writers need him to, rather than because right. it's believable that he would. So yeah, I mean, I'll point out again. Mm -hmm. the decisions he make he makes throughout the movie they're not and this isn't this isn't said in any reviews either it's not like well that's just completely unbelievable that he would do that Mm -hmm. they've put him in a situation where it is believable he would do it and they just don't like they seem to just not like the decisions that he's making like it's treacherous it's villainous they're saying these these words they're Mm -hmm. not saying oh it's just totally unrealistic they're not really saying that in any of the reviews Mm -hmm. it it doesn't come across as completely unrealistic. He's he's put in a situation where he has to... Mm. He doesn't have to, but he does make a very bad decision to say, uh, okay, mm. yeah, 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 just keep the letter, keep the letter, okay. And then he fakes the emails and... Yeah, so exactly. And, so and, and, he, mm. and he keeps making worse decision after worse decision after worse decision. Mm. And they're like, I just... I hate all... It's not that it's unbelievable. It's just they hate the decisions he's making. And for me, that is like saying, ah... Mm. Oh, that is similar to saying, you know, I was really on board with Lord of the Rings, but I just didn't like the decision Sauron was making. I understand Sauron's not meant to be the hero of the story, but you're critiquing decisions that you're right. It's decisions the writers have made, but it's it's just decisions the character is making. I feel like, I, I do really feel like you're not properly critiquing the film if you're just saying you don't like decisions that the character has made. Because it's not you're oh, saying I, they're unrealistic. You're just saying I don't agree with them. But okay, you don't. I don't think you're supposed to agree with all the decisions that every character makes. Well, why don't people say that for Lord of the Rings? Why don't you hear anyone saying, "Oh, I just, oh, I did, that was a bad film because Sauron he made a really evil decision." <laughs> why don't you hear people saying that? And you do hear lots of people saying this about Evan Hansen. I think, this is my honest opinion, I think there is a culture of cancel in the air at the moment where we're not allowed to forgive anybody, anything. And this film, in my opinion, if I'm going to really be honest, it's about a guy who makes a horrible decision and can we find it in ourselves to forgive him? And I think review after review after review are the same sort of people who are council culture, council culture, council culture, which we didn't have when Lord of the Rings came out. And now we do. We've got, like, now we've got this sort of culture on board where it's like, nope, he, he should never be forgiven. Like, he shouldn't, like, that's it. He made a bad decision. I'm out of the movie. This movie shouldn't exist. It's villainous. It's treacherous. They're so council culture about it. Hmm. And they were similar with the Joker, in my opinion. When that movie came out, similar, this is da- this movie's dangerous, it shouldn't exist. And it's like, okay, the Joker was making very poor decisions. And yeah, it wasn't the best, uh, it wasn't the prettiest, um, hot, like, uh, what's the word, performance of a mental illness. It wasn't shining a great light on mental illness. These criticisms are correct, but it didn't make the movie bad. It made the movie something that you disagreed with but all the all the aspects that went into the movie i think were really good with the joker and it got all the accolades to sort of show that but yeah a lot of people just disagreed with it this movie is getting torn to shreds and i think yeah i just i really do think they're like going no he made one bad decision and he uh you know, he thrived off that bad decision and he should be cancelled forever. That's kind of how I'm feeling with these reviews. And it's mm. frustrating for me. It's really frustrating. And it was frustrating with Joker a bit, but this is even more so. And um, the thing that frustrates me so much about it is they're missing all the actual reasons that make Dear Evan Hansen such a shit movie. Right. Because there is, it is such a shit movie really <laughs> yeah it's so bad i'm sorry for anybody who thought i was on the film's defense but it it is just a little void of cinematography and directorial character like all the all the shots are so black it is like a tv movie the way it's filmed and portrayed wow. is really static 
dull. The, it doesn't do anything interesting, and it feels weird. Like, more so than any other musicals, it feels weird when he's belting out a song, but it's just set at a dinner table, and he's sh- basically shouting <laughs> in his co-star's faces. It's like, I this isn't working. I don't agree with that decision. What a jerk. <laughs> It's really weirdly acted. His portrayal of this mental illness is really weird. He he gives himself... I mean, he's a theatre actor, so maybe it's just... hyper-extended... Th- he, needs, he needed to rein it in a bit. The film is just lack of imagination, in my opinion, in terms of its colour palette. Like, the, you know, like, cinema... The cinema, cinematographer is, like, the, the next main character... Like, your mm. movie has to have a character. When you watch Silence of the Lambs, if you watched it in Silence of the Lambs without subtitles, you'll still get a character just because of the way it's filmed. Lord of the Rings mm. has a character about it. This film is so dully filmed. Like, it really makes you bored watching a film that dull. Wow. And I feel like it's so annoying that that they're not criticising the, the, the main things that are making this film bad. Mm. rather than they're just going on a a bad decision that the character made, which is the whole conceit of the whole movie. That's what the whole movie's about. He makes a bad decision. Mm. Like, yeah, be... Oh, it's re- oh, yeah, really, really annoying that, uh, you know, Samuel Jackson shot those teenagers. All right, but the, the whole film's about gangsters shooting people. The whole film of Dear Evan Hansen is about this lie. It's all about it. The whole movie is about this lie. That's kind of what it's about. It's just a, a really strange thing for all the reviews to pinpoint, in my opinion. We need to feel on board with the protagonist. If we don't feel on board with the protagonist, we generally don't enjoy a film. And so some films say, OK, we're going to have a protagonist who are gangsters and kill people, but maybe get killed themselves. OK, so we'll make the film in this way and frame it in this way so that people will be on board with the protagonist, even though they kill people. If you make a rom-com and you're setting up a film like a rom-com and then halfway through the film, your romantic lead murders someone, it shoots a teenager in the face, like in Pulp Fiction, that doesn't jive with that film. Like now we feel, okay, why would I, oh my God, like why would I be on this protagonist's side now? Like what a terrible person. It's like, oh yeah, 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 but in Pulp Fiction, you didn't have a problem with it in Pulp Fiction. It's like, yeah, because that film was constructed with that in mind, whereas a rom-com was constructed with a different set of things in mind. So I'm guessing, even though I haven't seen the film, I'm guessing that Dear Evan Hansen, it sounds like the writers of the film were thinking the intention of the writers of the film was not to make the audiences go, Wow, what a jerk. Oh, he did such a bad thing. But, you know, oh, I'm still calling it a jerk. <laughs> like we do with John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson shooting teenagers in the face. It sounds like the intention of the writers was, oh, the audience is going to feel so bad for Evan Hansen. And, oh, he's such a sweet kid. And, oh, he has so much social anxiety. Oh, and the audience is going to feel like, oh, he just had to, oh, he was forced into this thing. And, oh, how awkward. And they told a lie and had to tell a bigger lie. And if the audience doesn't feel that, they feel like, no, he just shouldn't have told that lie. That was mean. Then, yeah, it's, the film's not set up in the way that keeps you on board with the protagonist. I, um... I agree that it would feel out of character if Hugh Grant randomly murdered some people in the middle of the film. Bridget Jones's friends. Yeah. But if it's the conceit of the film, if it's the point that Bridget Jones falls in love with a murderer and he's murdered people, but he's so charming and he's Hugh grant still, mm. I, I think it can but work. If, it... it's, if it's the conceit of the film. Mm. But is the conceit of the film, and I guess we don't know what the writers were thinking but is the conceit of the film evan hansen does a really mean jerk ass thing because he's just like oh so feckless and stupid and he does just a mean callous thing of telling this lie and then a bigger lie is that the conceit of the film or is the conceit of this film oh 
want. Oh no. Oh, he got kind of shoehorned into this. Oh, and then he had to tell a bigger lie. Oh no. How about I give you some? Uh, okay, spoiler alert. Why? Well, maybe a little bit of the bigger lies that he goes on. So, spoiler alert, everybody. Spoiler mm. alert. He. Oh, spoiler alert for Pulp Fiction for earlier. <laughs> He ends up seducing Connor's sister. Connor, the guy who committed suicide because the family mm-hmm. just love him. They bring him in. He ends up seducing mm-hmm. Connor's sister, and he has a whole song about like, oh, I didn't, I never thought a girl like that would ever pay me any attention. So, you, again, he's always trying to make you feel a bit sorry for him. He ends up like almost accepting money from the family to go to go to school, and that is, you know, almost like one step too far that even he can't go on with to the point Mm. where he has to eventually you know tackle with this lie that's got so out of control and now he's he's you know sleeping with the sister about to accept money he ends up having to tell the truth because he he can't do it anymore he feels too bad about it Mm -hmm. and yeah i would say it's it it goes from the very initial big misunderstanding oh his the suicide letter was written to you to him then going on to make worse and worse deliberately mm. bad decisions about it and probably made all the more worse that he looks like a 30 year old man seducing a 15 year old girl <laughs> <laughs> for money or whatever it is bad it is a bad film but again i i really think that whole oh he's such a treacherous character it's like you're right he is that's the point is it well, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I guess no one knows really the point. But to me, it's like, yeah, the story is about this teenager who goes on to make these horrific lies that everybody questions to the point where he ends up, like, at the end of the film, he has no more friends because he's lied so much. No one likes him anymore. But did you feel watching the film like he makes these worse and worse lies because of, like, Oh, oh, he kind of, oh no, oh, what a bad decision, oh no. no. Or did you feel watching the film, why the fuck would you do that? What a jerk-ass thing to do. Yeah, yeah, you get you get to that point. You get to that point. You go from, oh mm. shit, oh shit, no, don't say that. Okay, now you're just being a dickhead. Okay, now you're making really dickish decisions. And it's like people are going, well, that means it's a bad movie. Smash that like button, smash the video with his face, and watch the shit out of it. This one is fucked as I think it is oh, My eyes are wider than the little kid That's grown from chromosomes in order I'm older, my focus has shown the disorder Is this world really so great in a trade-in? Love or hate, maybe it's innate In the making of a primate Maybe fate's complicated, so maybe